so let's move on here and see what else is coming. Okay, this actually has two things in it. Um, one of these is a request I got from one of my online regulars. It is a movie called um, Chief Crazy Horse, I believe it's called, it's uh, Victor Mature as, uh, as the famous Native American chief. And it's directed by George Sherman, who made lots of Western films in the 40s and 50s. Um, this is called The Demolitionist. And this was just kind of something that I was like, oh, I'm gonna take it, I'm just gonna take a flyer on this. Because I don't think it has any other releases. So I was like, I'll order one of them. The price is really good. Um, this company doesn't necessarily have the best reputation, but it's one of those things where I was like, well, if this is the only version of it that's out. And I know Tom Sabini from the Night of the Living Dead remake, he's got a following. So I was like, I'll order one, see how it is. And uh, it seems like something that people are gonna want. Then the next time it's on sale, I'll grab another one and it should be nice and cheap. But yeah, I guess it's got uh, Nicole Eggert, and uh, yeah, I guess she was like a famous actress in the 80s. And uh, Richard Grieco, who I think was on 21 Jump Street. Uh, yeah. Oh. Here is another uh, request that I got for the new, um, I don't think it's Masters of Cinema, I think it's Eureka Entertainment. Uh, has put out um, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, Twilight Time has released it in the United States, I believe twice. I think they did a run of 3,000 and then I think they did a run of 5,000 and both of those have sold out. Um, I think the customer that requested this said that this is from a newer master maybe. So uh, so yeah, I know he's very excited about this. So it's great that that came in. Uh, it's got, who's the director? It's Henry Levin is the director, and it stars Pat Boone and James Mason. And I, I think it's, yeah, it's based on a book by Jules Verne. Next up. All right. It's uh, Funny Games by uh, Michael Haneke. Um, this is the original I guess it's Austrian version, uh, not to be confused with uh, his own American remake with Tim Roth and Naomi Watts. Sorry, I just like the name there for a minute. Yeah, this is the original one that he did. And uh, this is a French Blu-ray of it. So I used to get these when I first opened the store, I used to get them really cheap. And so I had them all the time and I sold them for a really low price. And then they jacked up the price and they never included it in sales anymore. And so for the longest time I didn't carry it. And so only just recently, the prices have gotten a little better. They're still not great, but they've gotten a little better. So glad to be adding this again. Okay. And um, this is a new addition to the store's inventory. It is Coonskin by Ralph Bakshi. It's a film that apparently at the time of its release uh, was boycotted by the NAACP. Um, although apparently they didn't see the movie before deciding that they were against it, which is, it's not just, generally speaking, I don't think that's the best idea. Um, I think in the time since then, uh, I, I feel like people tend to take higher of it. At the time, I think it was kind of a pariah. Um, but no, I think I think it is, it's gained in its reputation since then. Um, I had not seen it before I, I, I ordered a copy for the store, so I don't know how it looks in comparison to previous earlier releases. Um, I, I've seen some people online say they think it looks great. And I have seen some people online say they didn't think it looked good, but I don't know. I, mean, I think it's maybe one of those things where maybe people that are familiar with the earlier versions, uh, they're the ones that think it looks great because they've seen 
how it's looked earlier. And maybe the people who are saying that they don't think it looks that good, uh, maybe that's just because to them, they're just kind of looking at it from an absolute standard where they're putting it up against, you know, like Guardians of the Galaxy and Alien Covenant and, you know, like the picture quality you get for those kind of movies or even other more recent animated films. So, I mean, I could see how if you look at it, if you look at it from a context of this is the level of audio and video quality that I expect from a Blu-ray, I could see how someone might be like, eh, you know, this is not that. But I think for a lot of people that have kind of been with it for a long time, um, you know, they seem to be happy with it. All right, so I, I guess we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here and uh, look through these last two uh, packages. See what we have. Pretty sure this top one is from Germany. So, I think we have multiple copies of this one. This is a new addition to the store's inventory. Um, it's a Western by uh, the director Jack Arnold. Um, nowadays, Jack Arnold is better known for uh, being a major figure in Universal's uh, sort of sci-fi monster films of the 50s. Yeah. He made uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. He made Tarantula. He made uh, Incredible Shrinking Man. Uh, but as was often the case back then, they, these directors worked in other genres. Um, so he made a couple of Westerns. And uh, one of the Westerns that he worked on is this film with Lex Barker. Uh, I believe the title is uh, it's The Man from Bitter Ridge, I think it's called. And uh, yeah, so actually had some folks interested in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the inventory. Actually, yeah, three copies. Um, the other Jack Arnold Western that I recently added to the inventory and I'm just now restocking it is a movie called uh, No Name on the Bullet. And it stars Audie Murphy. Um, Audie Murphy is one of these people who was a real life World War II hero who came back from the war and he parlayed his fame as a war hero into an acting career. And so he started a lot of Westerns, a lot of war films, stuff like that. And yeah, this is one that he did with Jack Arnold. All right. Uh, another new addition to the inventory is a movie called California directed by John Farrow, who I believe is Mia Farrow's father. Uh, it stars uh, Barbara Stanwyck, and according on the back here, it's Anthony Quinn and Ray Milland. And I remember once telling a friend of mine that Ray Milland was where Cary Grant roles go to die, uh, which isn't a very nice thing for me to say. I'm sure Ray Milland is, was a ter terrific person and an accomplished actor but he does kind of seem like a poor man's Cary Grant. Um, this is a Studio Canal. Uh, well, it doesn't say Studio Canal on the front. But it's, it's the Studio Canal disc of uh, Jean-Pierre Melville's uh, Le Cercle Rouge, The Red Circle. Um, this is another one of those instances where I've, I've added some other titles recently, like um, The Discreet Charm of the, Charm of the Bourgeoisie, uh, and a couple of the Marcel Carnet, Jean Gabin movies where they'll get released in different territories by Studio Canal, but for whatever reason, the German releases tend to be really considerably less expensive than, um, than the British or even the French releases. So I've started adding those to the inventory and they've actually been selling pretty well. Um, and so yeah, this is this is one of those where I mean this will probably I'll put it out there for like ten and a half or eleven dollars. So I'm sure there are people who are like, well, but what about you know like the 
what about the new Melville box set or what about, you know, this or that? And it's just like, well, I mean, I'm sure that there are people out there who maybe don't want the whole box set or they're like, oh, I've heard Melville is good. I want to check him out. And, you know, just kind of as a thing where it's like, I can pick this up for $11 without having the, making the investment of buying the whole box set or whatever, you know. Courses for courses. Um, so yeah, this is the one that unfortunately the plastic got ripped. Uh, this is Kids by Larry Clark. Yeah, unfortunately, a little uh, rip in the plastic there, that sucks. Um, this film, uh, I guess today we, we think of it for a couple of different reasons. Uh, it was written by Harmony Kareen, who went on to have a pretty good career as a director. He has a good career as a director. Uh, I think he was still a teenager when he wrote the script for this movie. Um, a lot of actors, well, I mean, Chloe Savigny is someone who's still an actor today that's that's known. Rosario Dawson is also a prominent actor who was in this film. Um, Leo Fitzpatrick, uh, I know he was in The Wire. He had a, he had a considerable role on that trying to think like who else was in this movie that like went on to to be like famous um i think that's pretty much all the ones i can think of right now but yeah so that's really cool it'd be a lot cooler if this plastic hadn't gotten ripped though that's unfortunate all right um and lastly for this one uh we have um a movie called the comfort of strangers it's a uh paul schrader movie it's got a really incredible cast. It's got uh, Rupert Everett and was it Natasha Richardson? Yeah, Natasha Richardson. Didn't want to mix it up with Jolie Richardson. I think they're sisters. But yeah, Natasha Richardson and Rupert Everett and uh, as also a couple in the film, uh, Christopher Walken and um, Helen Mirren are in the film. So... Uh, it, it's this movie where uh, Rupert Everett and Natasha Richardson, they're in Venice, and the movie is shot in Venice. It looks incredible. Um, they're in Venice on a holiday, and uh, they're walking around one evening, and they encounter Christopher Walken, and they get to talking to him, and he's like, hey, let me show you around. I know where there's this really good restaurant, and they start hanging out with him a lot, and uh, they sort of get drawn into that social circle. So yeah, it's a very interesting movie with a, uh, with quite an ending. I don't want to say anything more than that, but I, I think when you see the ending, if, you're, if you haven't seen this before, you will be uh, very taken aback. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. All right, so it looks like this is another shipment from Germany. There was a there was a recent there was recently a pretty good sale in Germany, and I was able to pick up a lot of stuff in that sale for pretty cheap. So that's why I have so much stuff from Germany. I think I did yeah two out of two or three orders, so this should be most of it. All right, so what else do we have? Another copy of uh, Comfort of Strangers because one of my regulars had requested it. So I figured, well, I'll get one for him and then I'll get one more so that I restock it and I have it for the inventory. Uh, another No Name on the Bullet. There. Well, let's see. All right. So, um, also, we have a movie called Anne of the Thousand Days. It stars Genevieve Bujold as um, Queen Anne, who I believe was the second wife of Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn. Um, yeah, so it tells the story of the... 1,000 days of her tenure as the Queen of England. Uh, I think the director's name on that one is Charles J. 
Jarrett, J-A-R-R-O-T-T, -T, I think that's the name. Um, I wasn't too familiar with him as a director. Actually, when I looked into it, apparently um, he had directed, uh, I guess, some TV stuff and some theatrical stuff. So he was a big deal. I mean, like, that's how you, you make uh, a movie with big stars that gets 10 Oscar nominations on your first films by being a guy that, that was a very prominent theater and television director. Um, also have Don't Be Fooled by the Fact it says Jesse James on the front because in America this movie is actually known as The Return of Frank James. Um, this is actually a sequel. There had been a, uh, a Jesse James movie before. I believe it was Tyrone Power that played Jesse James and Henry Fonda had played Frank James. And so then in the sequel, they brought back Henry Fonda. And I believe actually in the opening minutes of the film, they actually used footage from the first film to kind of, you know, like, like almost like a serial, like here, you know, on a previous episode of the Jesse James story. Um, they did that, and this one is actually directed by Fritz Lang. I don't believe the first one was. In fact, I'm almost pretty sure that it's not. And this is actually, I believe, my favorite Fritz Lang movie, which is probably not a popular opinion. I suspect most people would not say that. Most people would probably be like M or Metropolis or some of his film noirs, uh, any number of movies. I mean, Fritz Lang is, is an incredible director at a career spanning decades um, there's no shortage of, of films to choose as a favorite but I really like this one so that's my choice um, this is uh, I believe it's called The Last Wagon it is I think the director on this is Delmer Daves yes Delmer Daves this is another one that was by request so uh, it stars Richard Vidmark and I'm not exactly sure what the story is on this one. Uh, like I said, it's a request. Uh, but yeah, Delmer Dave's making a Western with Richard Ridmark. I mean, it's kind of hard to beat that. Oh, yes, this is a, a request that I got. This is for um, Problem Child 1 and 2. Problem Child 1 is out in the United States, but however, Problem Child 2 is not. Um, and yes, this was by a request, but before anybody guesses, no, this was not requested by Larry Karaszewski, who is a regular at the store. However, and he is also one of the co-writers on these films, but no, he's not the person that requested this. This is actually for a friend of mine in England, uh, who has all three of the Problem Child movies. Um, I think he has it like on, it was like a 720p download. So I think it was probably like whatever in the UK their version of Voodoo is or whatever. But I was like, hey, this is actually out on a pressed Blu-ray. Do you, would you, would you want that? And he said, yeah, anything where it's an upgrade over what I have, just, just get it. So and this is for you, Adam. Problem Child 1 and 2. Uh, a couple more restocks uh, as the the Glenn Miller story by Anthony Mann, starring uh, Jimmy Stewart and June Allison, is the movie that pretty much whenever I have any kind of, um, whenever it's like Veterans Day or Memorial Day or any kind of, it seems like whenever I need an image for, for a post about it being a holiday, it seems like this one gets used disproportionately because I don't have a lot of like American war films. I mean, this is the, this is a biography of a famous musician who became, um, who became a pilot and, uh, and was in the military. Um, so, you know, this, it, it checks off a, a, a lot of boxes. So whenever I need an image and under those circumstances, I don't have a lot of choices. That's why you normally, you'll see a lot of uh, screen grabs from this whenever there's a holiday. But yeah, Anthony Mann, the great Anthony Mann, who went from making incredible film noirs to making some of the best westerns ever, 
to then having a run of terrific sword and sandal movies. Yeah. Can't beat that. Um, so last of oh, this group is uh, Match Point, is a restock of a Woody Allen film uh, with Scarlett Johansson and Jonathan Rhys Myers, I guess. All right, what else do we have? Okay, we have Cave of Outlaws, which is a Western by William Castle. Um, now, William Castle is someone that most people today know as the horror impresario who is generally credited as the influence of John Goodwin's character in Matinee. Uh, he was this sort of uh, low-budget horror filmmaker who used a lot of gimmicks to promote his films uh, back in the 50s and 60s. Movies like The Tingler, where you know you have things like they put the joy buzzer under the seats, you know. Um, but before making those movies, uh, Castle, again, you know, going back to what I was talking about earlier with, with Jack Arnold, it is, in a way, for him, it was in, in the inverse, because uh, Castle made westerns, and I believe before he made westerns, he did a lot of these sort of atmospheric kind of noir type pictures. But uh, it's funny because on this one, I watched this uh, Cave of Outlaws, you definitely see Cave of Outlaws almost feels like a a film noir where everyone's just dressed like in period Western costume. And with a lot of the music choices, you definitely almost kind of hear a soundtrack that's like, oh, that could easily be used in sort of like one of these, you know, kind of universal horror, like monster sci-fi movies of the 50s. So in a way there was almost kind of like foreshadowing of, you know, the kind of thing he was gonna do at least from the from the sound design, you know, and the music uh, selections. This is an interesting kind of period in his career uh, for that. So let's see what else. We have uh, Blue Collar by Paul Schrader, who we mentioned earlier. This was a this is the first film that uh, Schrader directed. Uh, I believe he had done the screenplay for. Um, Taxi Driver, and then parlayed that into, into doing Blue Collar. Uh, it's a film about these three guys that uh, work in an auto plant. I believe because none of the um, none of like the like the major many car manufacturers would let them make the film there because they they saw the film as being hostile to the auto industry. Uh, they actually had to shoot it at the uh, what was a, a plant that made checkered cabs. And it's a story of uh, three guys that work there, and they're all having financial challenges. Uh, Richard Pryor's character, he owes a lot of money in back taxes. Um, Harvey Keitel's character has a situation where his daughter at home needs braces. And uh, Yafet Kodo uh, is a guy who is living beyond his means, and it's uh, starting to catch up to him. So these guys, um, they get the idea that, you know, um, they're going to pull a heist. And I don't want to get too much further into all that kind of stuff. You know, you should watch the movie. I don't want to spoil it. But, uh, but yeah, these guys, they decide to, to, to pull a job. And uh, it's a fantastic movie. Um, for my money, one of the best movies of the 70s. And it's a movie that definitely resonates with us today. I mean, you know... Um, given the current state of where the middle class is in America and uh, the, the, the state of uh, unions and the state of industrialized uh, labor and unionized labor in this country. Um, yeah, it's, it's a movie that, that speaks to us as much as it did 30, 35 years ago. Um, See, is everything else here? No, not everything else is a restock. This is not a restock. Um, this is uh, season two of a television show called Utopia. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I added, I added the first season to my uh, 1080i50 section. I actually don't know a whole lot about this show other than I know that 
apparently it's very, very good. Uh, one of my regulars, when I when he saw that I got season one, he said, he said you need to just go ahead and order season two now. He said, because anybody who buys season one is immediately going to want season two because this show is supposedly outstanding. And uh, I think for us in America, most of us became aware of it uh, when there was – talk circulating a couple years ago that David Fincher was going to turn it into an American series. And I don't know if that's still going to happen uh, or not, but, uh, but yeah, that's kind of how people became aware of it. Um, but yeah, but yeah, from the people that I know who have actually seen it, they recommend it highly. And it's actually supposedly really good. All right. So these last three restocks, um, so we have a movie called young Adam. Uh, it's directed by David McKenzie, who is probably best known as the director of uh, Hell or High Water, which was one of the best reviewed movies that came out last year, the Jeff Bridges movie, the Western. Um, this is a movie he made about 10 years ago. Uh, it's based on a novel from one of the writers from sort of the, the Beat Generation era. Uh, I'm blanking on the name of the author, but... Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a film. It's got a great cast. I mean, you have Ewan McGregor, Tilda Swinton, Peter Mullen, Emily Mortimer. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's um, it's one of these things where it's kind of like I don't want to say like it's like a mystery or a thriller or a suspense movie, but it's just a story. You know, it's, it's just kind of is set where um, Ewan McGregor is just sort of drifter. And he takes up with um, with Peter Mullen and Tilda Swinton, who they have like a like a like a barge that they sort of take from place to place delivering stuff. And he stays with them. And uh, yeah, some some crazy wild things happen. And uh, yeah, entertainment ensues. All right, uh, we have here Jacques Tourneur's uh, Anne of the Indies. Not to be confused with Anne of the Thousand Days. Um, this is a film in which Gene Peters plays, uh, I would say, almost like a proto-Riot girl. You know, uh, she is a pirate, and uh, she's as hard as any pirate there is in, in, in the West Indies, and uh, she bows down to no man. And uh, this is a film that uh, Tornor made, of course, Jacques Tournor made his name, and to this day, he's still remembered mostly for uh, the original Cat People. And I walked with the zombie, and then later doing Curse of the Demon. So he's more known for, for the sort of low-budget horror film. But again, you know, because these guys all kind of worked in these genres, you know, he made westerns like Canyon Passage. Um, and he made a pirate movie with Gene Peters as the star, and, you know, Peters... Um, I believe in the movie she is a uh, she's a disciple of Blackbeard, and uh, there's for a time she is the most pure, she's the most feared pirate in the West Indies, and uh, you know and she's a badass and uh, and yeah this is pretty great. So the last of the restocks that came in is a movie called Four Rooms, and uh, it's an anthology film. It has four segments, and they are directed by, who's it, Robert Rodriguez, uh, Quentin Tarantino, um, who's Alexander Rockwell, and Alison Anders. So, Alexander Rockwell, you might remember from this is In the Soup, he made the movie where, like, uh, where it was, like, Steve Buscemi, and I think he did he did an early movie that was was that the one he made with with Brad Pitt, yeah, Alexander Rockwell, one of these figures of American independent film of the sort of mid to late eighties. I believe he actually worked on Jim Jarmusch's Strange in the Paradise uh, as an assistant. Tarantino, of course, needs no introduction. Everybody knows Tarantino, and for that matter, Robert Rodriguez. Uh, Alice Anders, uh, of course, Gas Food Lodging, 
I believe she's a, last I heard, she was a professor at, uh, I want to say UC Santa Barbara. And I think, I think she was one of the board members at CineFamily. So, um, so yeah, um, it's interesting. The last person who bought this was telling me that, uh, the, the number one reason why he wanted to buy the Blu-ray, even though he's like, I, he'd seen the movie dozens of times and he loves it. He was saying that apparently the version that's available for streaming domestically, there was some sort of music rights issues and there's a couple of music cues that they had to change. So I guess if you watch it like on Netflix, the music is not the same uh, as it was on this original version. So, um, so I put it on for him and he knew, he, know, he knew the movie so well, he knew exactly which, which scenes to go to to check the music cues. And he was like, he's like yep, yeah, this has got the original music on it. So, uh, so th at that point he was like, yeah, I absolutely want to own this. And so I sold it to him. All right, so, uh, so that's it for today. Uh, I actually counted it up and uh, I think the, the overall tally today came to like 35 titles which is far and away the, the most I've ever had come in for a single day. I think the previous high was something like 28. So yeah, this is a monster haul. So uh, so yeah, it's a lot of work to do. You gotta get the stuff processed and down on the floor for you guys to buy. Um, so just kind of wrapping things up, uh, just wanted to say um, appreciate it if you like the videos and subscribe to the channel. And if you could share it with all the folks out there that you know who, uh, who love movies, who love collecting Blu-rays. So that's it for this time. And uh, I guess uh, see you next time.